I just finished putting an actuator in my S595 here, and it's very important that when we install an actuator that we calibrate that actuator. This is an SJC machine, which means it's all joystick control. So I'm gonna show you how to calibrate this without using a dealer laptop or something. There's just a sequence we go through that'll calibrate the actuator. Not only are we gonna calibrate the SJC, I'm gonna take you in the shop and I'm gonna show you exactly why it's important to calibrate these. It's really neat. You can actually physically see what's going on here and uh, it'll make more sense to you. But first, let's jump in here and just go ahead and get it calibrated. So now that we're in the machine, the first thing we're gonna do is pull the armrest down and uh, before we even turn the ignition on. Now this one is a uh, deluxe panel, so we don't have a key, but it's gonna work the same, same way with the key machine, so. All right, right here we're looking at the right hand joystick so we got forward and to the right so that's what we're going to do is we're going to push this forward to that up right position you see how that's going an angle that's forward that's right up and right okay and we're going to hold it in that position i'm just going to use my leg here to kind of hold it up like that all right while i'm holding that joystick what i want to do is turn the ignition to the on position without starting the machine and then we're gonna go over here to our, what we call PTOL. This is the push to operate switch. Press that. Oh, it says door. It looks like I gotta shut my door first. So let's shut the door. Oh, as soon as I shut the door, uh, it started the calibration. So I already initiated it, but I had to shut the door to, uh, to get it finished. So now you see we have a code up here and it beeped on us. And we can go over here to our deluxe panel and it says ACS calibration performed. So that tells us that that calibration actually took. So hopefully you heard the, um, the actuators run. Let, let's do this process one more time. Okay. Joystick forward and to the right. We're gonna hold it there. I'll just hold it with my elbow ignition on all right listen carefully maybe we'll hear him when i press this green button beeps it gives us our code w3224 we can verify yep calibration performed so that's how easy it is to do it on the sjc machine so even if you haven't installed a uh, actuator i would encourage you if you have an sjc machine just go out there and just go ahead and run a calibration real quick it's actually a, a good idea to calibrate them every now and then so to help explain why we uh, calibrate these actuators when we put them on i built a little jig here and th this is kind of a mock-up of a control valve and this is a lift spool here we've got our actuator on this side and we've got our centering spring right here because this actuator goes in both directions. Move the bucket up, move the uh, bucket down, or the loader arms, I guess. And um, then this spring will center it, but this spring is a double acting, so it pushes both ways. So um, what I've done is I've got a, a servo driver and a motor controller, and that way we can drive this actuator. See, I can drive it in both directions. If we don't calibrate the actuator, it's possible this actuator could push uh, this spool all the way to the end point and try to push beyond the end point. And what that'll do is that'll cause extra current inside the actuator motor and just burn up our brushes a lot quicker. Um, let's take a look at the amp clamp here and we can take a look uh, exactly what's going on here. So I've got my amp clamp uh, on the positive lead of the motor. And we can see we're just about zeroed out here. and there's, there's no load on the actuator motor. Now if we start to move the actuator, we can see our current build. I'm going to stop the actuator right here. See we're about two and three quarter amps. And you can see we still got a little space in our spring. We're not quite deadheaded. So two and a half, two and three quarter amps, that's kind of a normal uh, load on the actuator motor. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go beyond the end point. I'm going to turn this a little more. Okay, now I've got the actuator starting to deadhead. See, we're almost at four amps. Yep, four amps. Now let's keep pushing that actuator more. Keep pushing it harder. Keep pushing it harder. Nine. 
No. That's about 9, 10 amps is, is what we can do if we push all the way against that. See, now we're dead center. Zero amps. Move the actuator a little bit. And see, we can hold it right there with our motor controller. There we are, that 2.3. Like I said, anywhere between like two and a half, two and three quarter amps is fine. Now we're gonna push it, deadhead it. And here we go up on our amperage, nine, 10. And then it just starts to freak out. That's more current than my motor controller can actually handle. So then we bring it back down to the neutral position. So when we run that calibration and you hear those actuators moving inside the machine, the ACS controller is finding those endpoints. It finds that high current and it stops the maximum travel of the actuator before it goes before it uh, goes over current, I guess you can call it. And um, you know, it, it really helps increase the life of the actuators. So whenever you replace an actuator or you do any type of um, work if you remove the spool or the spring or do seals or whatever it's a good idea to go ahead and recalibrate that actuator and even if you haven't done it in a long time if you've never actually uh, calibrated your actuators just run a, a calibration real quick you saw how easy it is and that'll just make sure that everything is centered and the endpoints are found according to the controller and we uh, maximize the life on our actuators so hopefully that helps visualize what the calibration does and why it's important and hopefully it's just a little tip to help you out and clarify some things for you. So thanks again for the support. I really appreciate you watching. Let me know in the comments if you've done an actuator calibration and if it was successful or not, or if it continues to fail. If you have a bad actuator, it's possible that that calibration will not pass and it'll give you a separate code and tell you which um, actuator is giving issues. So thanks again.